Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. In this video I am going to talk about something that is very relevant to the studies that I am doing here at the project. And over the last several years I've been making much of the fact that the kind of radiation we are seeing uh, looks like it has a very strong magnetic component. And I did a description about how uh, Hutchison metal bars uh, had a kind of exotic vacuum object build up in them. And because uh, it's iron, they get locked in place. And so they, uh, as they build, they build their magnetic fields, which are um, quite localized. And uh, they get to a point where the structural integrity, the structural strength of the um, steel uh, in the spanner or whatever it is, is not sufficient to um, stop the metal from being torn apart. And uh, uh, also I used magnets, neodymiums here, uh, similar to this, uh, to focus uh, what I thought would be magnetic. Uh, and Keith Fredericks has also determined that there seems to be a magnetic influence on these particles of strange particles, strange radiation. And uh, what I regret not knowing was the polarity of the magnet. Now, I've described how in the up-and-coming supernova experiments, I want to place some magnets around the reactor next to uh, X-rays such that uh, I might be able to guide the strange radiation if it is produced uh, towards those X-rays. And I want an understanding of whether a north pole attracts them, a south pole attracts them, or both poles attract them, because that will give some idea about the type of magnetism that is involved with these uh, structures. Anyway, so I've got three here, and uh, if I push these together, uh, you will see the one in the middle goes away and it pushes that one away and that one pushes that one away and that one pushes that one away. So they are kind of repelling each other. Uh, this would imply they are different poles from each other. But which is the north and which is the south? That is the question. This actually reminds me, if you uh, go and look at uh, one of the videos I did on the... Uh, Hutchison fracture sample, uh, you will know that I, I I was kind of suggesting these structures are very magnetic, but they sort of self-organize. They, they, they can't uh, get too close to each other. But if you add a lot of them, they kind of can help being close to each other. Because if you had one over here and one over here and one over here, they would kind of have to find a, a balance between their forces. But anyway, uh, this is one of the ways you can have some sort of self-organization by this repulsion. But I want to find out what um, uh, these poles are on here. And so I'm just going to move this one off to the side. I have to say these ND52s, uh, they will fly together and smash apart. And I've lost quite a few of them. I did a whole video uh, on another subject I want to share with you in the coming months. Uh, and uh, I lost about six or seven of these magnets in the process of uh, trying to do that video. It was, it was quite harrowing, actually. So they are quite dangerous, I must say. So um, be careful if you get some of these. Um, anyway, uh, so I want to find out what magnets these uh, poles are uh, on, on these magnets. And one way you can do that is with a Hall effect sensor, which just costs a few tens of cents. And you wire it up to a you know, a low a voltage and you put a green and an LED on there. And there are videos on the web of how to make these. Um, and, you know, I could have done that, but I fortunately have a cheap, um, rather second-hand uh, phone here. This phone I use for uh, doing um, sort of sound recording and some other functions that an old phone like this is very, very capable for doing. But I don't tend to use the magnetic functions in here, so I'm not so worried about it being destroyed. Anyway, this... Uh, application here is a magnet pole finder. It's by a company called Super Magnet. Uh, they actually sell uh, strong magnets uh, and it's just a way for them to advertise. But they use the sensor that's in the phone and if you bring your pole uh, of your magnet close uh, it will tell you what it is. So we go around that way. It's north and it's south on the bottom. Now presumably the other one we have over here is the opposite pole. So uh, we have south, uh, south, and we have north, south, north. So that is north with the recess there. It's north without the recess, south with the recess. So uh, we have confirmed 
that uh, these are opposite polarity. North there. Is it gonna, you know, the, the fields are maybe interfering here. North. No, uh, they're both north because they're upside down from each other. So that's exactly what we expect. North there. Uh, north there. If I turn that round, south on the recessed part, south on the non-recessed part. So there we go. It's a quite nifty little app. It is free, so this is not going to break the bank. Um, uh, but do be aware that if you expose supermagnets to a phone, uh, it's going to damage potentially some of the magnetic sensitive components in there, and maybe your GPS won't work, or you know your gyrometer won't work, or you know. So I would suggest you use an old phone like this if you're going to take this route. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.